Hi everyone, Sean back from the Sci-Fi Model Guy and welcome to chapter five of the USS Enterprise D build series. This is the 1400 series from AMT and it's actually all done. I'm all done. I'm looking at it right there and, and it really turned out great, everyone. Uh, I, I've been posting some update pictures and I posted one last one last night of the uh, reflection of the ship on the stand that I built, but that's as far as I'm going to go. Uh, it, I just got to tell you, it turned out so nice. I am so thrilled with it. I really feel good because it, it does show that the skills I'm learning are improving. And a lot of that is thanks to you out there uh, have been giving me some great tips and advice and everything and really sharing what you know. And that's what it's all about. So it's really, it's really helping me out and hopefully helping everyone out there out a little bit as well. So um, in this, in this uh, video, everyone, we are going to be talking about the nacelle lighting. This is the pretty much the entire, uh, the entire video is dedicated to the nacelles. We're going to talk a little bit about the star drive section about like wiring those nacelles. So I guess it's, it still applies. It's a little bit longer of a video than I would uh, generally am trying to do. I'm trying to keep these at 30 minutes. Uh, this one's pushing up around 40 and then maybe 45 after this intro. So we're not going to be doing any viewer, viewer mail today, but please continue to send those in. It's the sci-fi model guy at gmail.com. And I promise whatever pictures you send will be featured on the show. So go ahead and send them in with descriptions and everything thing. And uh, for the other thing that we're doing, uh, I am extending the giveaway another week or so. It's just because I haven't had the, the time to collect the names and put it in and come up with a way to do the drawing. Uh, might even do that on a live stream. Still thinking about it. So if you want to still enter for the giveaway, it's a hashtag enterprise. Uh, I, I will still take them, you know, one entry per person and all that. And uh, and we'll, we'll get that, that going soon. And uh, so hopefully this video is uh, helpful for everyone. Now you may notice on here, just a, one little call out here, um, that uh, when I'm putting one of these nacelles together, you're going to notice a gap in, in one of them. I taped the thing together and then I, I didn't see it. It was like a just nasty gap. However, uh, just note that the techniques I did use showing you in this video worked and they worked really well. The nacelles on this are the best uh, outcome for nacelles for the later generation Star Trek, you know, the Enterprise D, the Enterprise E, the Enterprise C, you know, where we've got the, the glowing nacelles. Uh, this is by far the best result I've ever had. There's not one light leak out of these things. Uh, the seam lines that I did uh, came out really nice, even uh, in there's like a little ridgy area in the front of the nacelles that turned out just great uh, with some sand, sanding, uh, the needles, uh, sanding needles, sorry. Um, Anyway, yeah, so that's it. So a lot of good information here. We're going to talk about how we lit the nacelles, what lighting techniques we used, and all that. So uh, it's a really good video. It's going to go hopefully pretty fast for you, but you should learn quite a bit. And uh, hopefully if, you, if you're out there, if you're on the fence on buying this kit, I highly, highly recommend getting it. This is such a fun build. Uh, and I would recommend also, uh, definitely you want to get the Aztec, detail, uh, the Aztec decals for it as well as the photo etch uh, specifically the photo etch that i'm using uh, is it, there's there's several uh, available but the one i'm using has uh, the pieces for the the back of the star drive section uh, which is where we're going to hide the wiring for the for the ship in there and it's also got some phaser strips arrays which really turned out nicely and it's got a couple other pieces that i actually didn't use but should have uh, but uh, that photo etch is good and the other thing i'm going to highly recommend is the deflection array the resin deflector array from green strawberry absolutely wonderful i the, the deflector array is probably for me the highlight of this kit and so if you're still on the fence just just get it i mean between the photo etch and the uh, Aztecs and the, uh, the the green strawberry and there's a few other things you can get as well uh, you the total cost on the kit so you got about 40 bucks for the for the ship and about 40 for all those other things. So it's a good $120 investment. But um, just for me, I say in for a penny, in for a pound, if you're going to do it, I think if you can save up the money, save it up and get it. You will not be disappointed. And especially if you're following along with me, uh, you're going to be really happy with the results. I wish I could show you guys. So, but I can't. Uh, all right. That's it for the intro, everyone. Hashtag enterprise for another week or so, and we will see you down the road. Take care. Well, here we are, everyone. We are ready to start 
assembling the warp nacelles. Actually, I've got most of them assembled now, but we're going to talk about it here. So uh, right here, uh, I wanted to make sure to document this part on video. So as you can see here, we've got the chiller grills here that have been painted already and the uh, bottom part of one of the warp nacelles. So if you can uh, recall back, or maybe I didn't even talk about it. If so, I'm sorry. On the inside of here, uh, I painted this with just some Tamiya uh, primer, just a white primer to get some diffusion with the uh, the light so we wouldn't see too many light spots. And if you can see here, I'll just try to get that covered up. You can see that it's got a really nice blue glow. And also, uh, we talked about this here. This is Tamiya clear blue in a spray can. Now before, every time I had done this, sorry about my arm there, every time we had done this, I would used this to me a clear blue with the airbrush as well as the clear red uh, here for the front of the, the Bussard collectors. Um, the thing with the airbrush though, it takes a lot of coats. You have to let it dry, uh, which means that the airbrush can get clogged. And um, I've just had a lot of trouble using the airbrush to get these done because they always get uh, either not enough paint on there or I, I over apply it because I want to coat it well and uh, it just wasn't working. So uh, when I was in Las Vegas, I went, there's a really great hobby store called Hobby One Japan. They sell a lot of Gundam stuff, some, uh, some a lot of Bandai things and Tamiya paints and, and all kinds of great supplies. If you're in the Las Vegas area, look up Hobby One Japan. And I found this. I didn't even know this existed. This is Tamiya Clear Blue in a spray form. And we have Tamiya Clear Red, TS-74 and TS-72. So I, I bought these thinking these would be great for the, you know, the warp engines on Federation ships. And I got to tell you, everyone, I am absolutely thrilled. I am a believer now <laughs> in the spray for this. Uh... Again, I mean, like we've said, I hate using my airbrush, um, but in this instance, I have to say, I think the spray can is the absolute best solution. The reason being, you can apply a lot of very thin coats without having to clean up uh, your airbrush, without making a mess, without uh, wasting any, actually, because you'd have to put a very little bit in your airbrush, coat it, clean it, waste your, your cleaning solution, spray it out, let this thing dry, and then recoat it. Um, what we're looking at here is about six coats of that clear blue, and it came out absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's just it just even. There's no light spots in here. I'm I'm just thrilled. Uh, can't can't praise it enough. I'm gonna say it, put put this in some more. You can see there. There's just no uh, there's no runs. There's no drips. You know, no no runs, no drips, no errors. You know, as Johnny Bench used to say for the, I think it was Krylon. Krylon. So. Um, that's that. So I'm going to take a pause real quick. I will be right back and then we're going to uh, secure these. I'm going to show you the solution I found to put these on to the nacelles and you're going to love this one. So I'll be right back. Okay, uh, everything is all set up here and uh, we're going to go ahead and, and install these things. Now, the secret I found is this right here, Solar Res. Uh, if, again, uh, you may not have this. Uh, so if you don't have it, what uh, you may want to just use some CA glue uh, just to do this, or even some canopy glue might work. Uh, and we did use some canopy, canopy glue with the Bussard collectors, which uh, I'll show uh, shortly here. So um, the, uh, yeah, the trick here is the solar resin. The reason this is so good for this is because uh, it's clear. It doesn't show smudges. It doesn't distort light. It doesn't melt paint. Uh, it doesn't do anything wrong. And it's strong enough to to hold these things in here. Uh, the, these things aren't bearing any weight. Uh, they're not under any stress. So, you know, I was thinking about it. And all the other times I've installed these things, um, I've used the regular, uh, you know, the model cement here. And the, the only this stuff really grips whole, hard and welds things. But the thing is, is that it it just kills the paint. It just distorts it, and then has always caused a problem. Um, so 
this time I decided to try the solar res and again going back we did use the uh, spray paint the clear blue and it just came out so good I'm so excited and happy I, I, I just can't tell you <laughs> so so here we go um, I'm gonna hold this in here and try to stay in the camera here now you'll see here how well it fits you know, there's like no gap there there's no um, it doesn't look like there will be any light leaks or anything like that um, and and it just fits really well so what I'm gonna do is is try really hard to do this right for you <laughs> uh, in in one shot and it's hard, kind of hard with the camera rolling and everything so I'm gonna lay this in here and I already did the other nacelle so so I've have have a little practice at this so I'm gonna lay it in there and I'm just gonna look at it here visually and really align it make sure it's there perfectly and it looks it looks just right now the trick here on this part is to lay it down very carefully and have it not move so and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the solar res here just a very small amount just to anchor this thing so i'm going to put it right here just squeeze a little bit out very gently Trying not to even touch the the piece at all. Make sure it spreads down so that it's touching both the nacelle and the the grill. There we go. Maybe I can zoom in now. I'll risk moving it. There we go, and we'll zoom in some more. And there you can see right there where the solar res is holding it so we're going to use the uh, ultraviolet light here for a few seconds and that should be fine and now it's it's in place so now the trick let's zoom out again there we go sorry about the shaking it's just this little camera mount or the phone mount here that i have this on so now this part's a little little wobbly so we're just going to make sure and kind of press it against there so it's lined up and I'm just using my finger to kind of hold it in place just slightly we're gonna put some more solar res down here a little bit more this time we're gonna hit it with the light And there we go. So you can see here, it's really nice and flush. There's no gap. You can't move it around. This stuff bonds strongly enough to, to get that done. So I'll just put a little bit more here on the edge just, just to be certain. Put a little bit there. And it's always hard to make sure that we're in the shot here. So is it, with this, I only get one chance. All right. Well, there that, there that be. <laughs> there it is. So now we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So uh, what I'm going to do here is use some canopy, canopy glue right here. And this is just a Formula 550, 560 canopy glue from Zap. Uh, it's basically Elmer School glue that dries pretty clear. And uh, we're going to use some of that, and we're also going to use just a little bit of the uh, model cement or the the, the liquid cement um, for for there. So the only part of this whole thing where we have plastic touching plastic is the front of the nacelles here, and it looks like I did forget to to clear out this um, this part of the paint on one of these guys there it is hold on bear with me just want a little bit of that bare plastic here on these parts there that's the only part of the plastic that's really connecting everything else is uh touching the the chiller grills or the bizarre collector okay so uh let's also here we got to put some can uh, some uh, canopy glue in there 
It's a little bit for the Bussard collector to touch. All right, now you might see here there are some wires going down in there. Now that I just drilled right through with my uh, Dremel uh, drill bit, and that is in the precise spot to to uh, where we need it to go to mount to the ship. We'll explain all that later, but uh, I just want to point out that I did dr drill the hole there and put these wires down through there. You see three of them. Uh, the positive and negative just for the for the basic wiring and then this green one uh, which is for this uh, strobe effect uh, back here all right so we've got this prepared um, oh uh, let me let me step let me uh, rewind a little bit now the reason for the pause was because we have this this gap here um, there's really not much I can do about it right now what I'm going to do well I could but what I'm going to do is just put this thing together and then on the back end here, I will put some um, combination of some CA, probably just CA glue. Uh, now CA glue is a gap filling medium and we can use that as a clear thing to put there. So I'll just slowly build some up and get it in there and then we'll paint that with a clear blue and it should be just a minor little glitch. And besides, we don't really look at this model from the behind the ship so this little gap here there's going to be a little bit of an inconsistency right there uh, and it's just something i'm going to have to live with all right so let's go ahead and prep the glue we've got the canopy glue there and now this stuff you can put down it takes quite a while to dry and you notice here we have another uh, blob of the canopy glue there and we've got a swab there that will come uh, clear what we're going to do with that in a minute so I'm just going to put a little bit of the liquid cement, not much at all. In fact, that's too much right there. I don't want it squeezing out too much. That's plenty. Okay, make sure this wire's out of the way. Now. Where I'm going to dab some of this canopy glue is along the inside here. Sorry, like right in here, there's there's a little step uh, to where this thing, this part of the chiller grill connects connects to the uh, the hole of the the cell. There, it's kind of hard to explain, uh, but there's like it butts up against here. It's like a little 90 degree angle that goes like around there, and it makes it a nice secure fit. So I'm going to put just a little bit in a few spots here like that those are just just a few I don't think I need too much of course we'll find out uh, if this was a wise course of action I still think it's a better solution than what I'd done previously that might be a little too much. There, that's that's probably better. Um, now this might dry. You might see a little bit of a spot there, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as you know the other times I've I've done this where I've used the model cement and it literally melts the paint paint and you just see these these blobs, these, these white spots and stuff. So. Uh, I think this is going to turn out to be pretty good. So we've got to make sure I've got everything coming out there. All right, we'll go ahead and lower this down. Not bad. Now we don't want too much movement going around here. I'm squeezing this together. Now I do have prepped some tape down here now the big thing is going to be right here this is where we put the model cement this is going to have to be the part that really gets squeezed together nicely now over here a little bit more you can see here some of the canopy glue from before is popping out so let me get a little rag here this is off cam sorry i was off camera there so I'm really going to squeeze this together really hard. You can see this, this keeps popping out. 
And that's why this was important to get the, that model cement there. Okay, so what I might even do after this, now that I've got this tape on, and the tape should be enough to, to secure it, but I want a little bit more. So when I'm, when I'm done wrapping this with the tape uh, over here, I'm going to, um, hopefully that, does that look weird? No, it doesn't look too weird. Sorry about that. I'm concentrating here and, and trying to uh, talk to you. So uh, let's go there. Probably should have made this tape a little longer. That's okay. But uh, yeah, squeezing it together really tightly, pulling the tape down. And you can put a lot of pressure on this. You can pull the tape pretty hard and it won't tear if you're doing it correctly. So that's good. Now I'm going to put some more tape here on, on these sides. Because again, you know, this is where the, the canopy glue was. So I want to make sure and we tape this stuff really well and give that canopy glue a chance to set properly. Squeeze, so again, squeeze it together, put it on one end, right? Pull up, like I'm pulling toward the camera here, pulling up and around, and then setting it. So you want a lot of tension there. This, like I said, this tape can take a lot of stress. You'd be surprised. Or maybe you've done it before and you're not surprised. So okay, squeeze, pull up, and there we go. Now, I am going to use the clamps. Uh, I generally don't like to use clamps, but right here in this spot, this part is, is very important for me to get right. Now, it is important to note that if you're going to use these things, you don't want to overdo it. And you also want to make sure that you have some tape or you have something in some barrier in between these rubber parts and your piece. But uh, yeah, that's it. It looks pretty solid. And let's just hope that that canopy glue is, is good enough to hold it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this set overnight. And I'm going to come back in the morning. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to power this thing up and look for light leaks. And if I don't see any, then I will go ahead and do the same process with the other nacelle. I've got this piece here that I did and this piece here. Okay, so we're gonna put that away, at least we're, we're gonna put it to the side uh, for tomorrow morning. And now we're going to talk uh, just a little bit here about what the heck we did uh, over here. Now, I probably should have done this part here uh, before demonstrating that other uh, thing that we just did, but you know, I, I didn't. <laughs> So, so we're just going to talk a little bit about, you know, what the lighting scheme was, uh, what the strategy was when we went and did this. Okay, so uh, in here we have a strip of the LED. Now this here, folks, this is warm LED light. This is not the bright white that we were using for the windows in the saucer section or anything. This is the warm. Uh, the warm light tends to just work a little bit better, softer with these nacelles. Um, of course, if you don't have the warm light, that's that's fine. You can even paint a little yellow. Uh, little If you only have the white one, you can just paint a little yellow over that and it would diffuse a little bit or even a little, uh, um, to me, a, a white primer over that just gently to soften it or diffuse it a little bit. And again, we do have the inside of this was painted a, a little bit diffused with the uh, Tamiya primer. All right, so we have, we have these uh, nacelles there. Now... Right here is an 0805 white SMD, and we're going to connect this to a, the strobe uh, effect on the uh, from the nav board. So it's going to be the flash, the fast blinking one. Now you may see here there's some black bits there. I had another one there. This is the bottom of the nacelle. I had another 0805 there, 
and I had wired it up and everything. And then I realized I'm going to have to wire that over here and connect the special negative wire for the nav board that it connects to because these things, uh, it, if, you, if you're not aware, the positive wire from these lights goes to any other positive wire. The negative uh, wire from these, uh, the black one, is what gets connected to the nav board to control the blinking frequency. So um, that's why we have these three here. So the, this green one here that's going to connect to the to the strobe effect on the nav board is is for the uh, for this uh, light there. Uh, this is the top of the nacelle. Now originally I was going to do top and bottom, and if you go back to the show. Uh, both the top and bottom of the nacelles blink in unison. Um, now, this was something I probably could have corrected everyone. And again, if I was building this for somebody else, I probably would have figured out a way to connect it. Uh, but it would have been would have meant three more wires coming over here and connecting it. And it just would have been a, a little bit more messy than I was willing to deal with. As it is, this will shine... Uh, white through there. I'll put a little bit of uh, solar res there uh, to just simulate a bulb and uh, it just won't be blinking. So the blinking one will be the top. Uh, it, it's just going to be a thing that happens. I, I would have loved to have had the top and bottom blinking on that just like you see in the show, but uh, it was a decision I made. <laughs> um, you know, I just wanted to keep moving with the model. This isn't going to bother me so much. Uh, I might look back and go, eh, it would have been nice to have it and everything. Uh, and man, that was my Jay Leno right there. Yeah, well, it would have been fine. You know, it would have been, it would have been okay. You know, a little light blinking, you know, so what? You know what? Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, it's just going to be something I have to deal with. You know, I just wanted this part here to be nice and clean. I didn't want to have to deal with wires and and all that maybe on the next time i build this i'll i'll do that now that i've learned a little bit so anyway uh yeah that that's it and then um okay so warm warm led strip there the 0805 white smd is there and i put some solar res on this side uh light blocked it out with some black and that's ready to go the uh resistor for that is is tied right here and you can see it's it's plugged in or it's soldered right there in the middle on the, that contact. Uh, other parts are, are soldered around here. So we've got the main wire here that's going to come out of the, here are the main wires. So we're gonna, we're gonna move those out of the way. And then right here, we have a 1.8, uh, I think it's a 1.8 millimeter. Uh, let me see here, let's, let's grab it, huh? 1.8 millimeter LED uh, warm white. Oh, no, it's a white one, actually. The ones I have is white. And um, it comes with resistors and everything. That's I don't like using these because you have to wire the resistor up yourself. You can see here, you know, you have to use, I use my helping hands. And you have to connect the resistor to this thing. I, I prefer to be lazy and use the things that have a resistor already attached. Uh, you know, it just gets messy. But anyway, I, you know, I did it. I wanted the 1.8 millimeter light and you can see that right there in uh, right here on top of there, there are two small pieces of sprue that maybe you can see, uh, right there, one and two. I just cut these. They're about a centimeter in length, half an inch or so. And there's two little pieces, con uh, stacked on each other. And then the light is on top of that. And the reason I did that is to get the light to go right kind of in the middle of the Bassard collector. You can kind of see it there. There she is right there. And that lights up the nacelle really nicely. So then these guys here are connected to the LED strip there. You know, uh, the negative is over here and the positive is right there. You can, you can see where they're connected. And I didn't film that, but uh, they work. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll just do a dry fitting here. Why not? And I'm going to uh, I'm going to strip this stuff and connect it to the to the to the uh, power supply here. Sorry, sorry. A little little brain fog. Little brain fog there. And uh, I'll just strip these out 
and connect him over to the power supply and I'll film that and we'll just do a little dry test. So uh, stand by, stand by. You've got to set up the camera here. Howdy folks. Okay, so here we are with the nacelles and just a couple of things to say about that. I've just got a couple of things to say about the nacelles. Um, yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, here they are here and um, it really worked well. The initial thought I was going with was to use the uh, solar res to kind of lock down these uh, the chiller grills there. Now that did work for the most part uh, on one side. So um, the challenge with these things obviously is that uh, you can only kind of glue and really secure one side of them and because the other side goes right on top. Uh, it, it would really be nice if, if AMT could come up with a, a better a better solution to putting these on because it's really tough to get the these things to not have a gap. So what happened was uh, last night, and, and I think I think I recorded it, so we'll show it, uh, or you've seen it already. But um, uh, when I took it off this morning, there there was uh, just a little tiny gap here, like a millimeter worth of gap, but that was enough to shine this like straight beam of light out of there, and it was just uh, frustrating, very frustrating. So I, I, I had to pop it open. Uh, again, I had only really glued it up here in the front, uh, where you see these clamps and I'll, I'll, uh, talk about that in a second. Um, so yeah, the solar res worked really well underneath. Now it just wasn't connecting up here very well. So I ended up resorting to some CA glue. So, uh, but what I did was um, if I have it here, yep, there it is. I put I put a little CA glue here on my little palette, and I didn't record it, and I should have, but I was just kind of working with it. And all I did was just take a little bit of the CA glue and I dabbed it about every inch and a half. So one there, a little dab there, a little just the tiniest of dabs of CA glue. And the reason I didn't use the mono glue obviously is because the model glue really dissolves paint uh, in a big way. And so I just went really tiny dots of this uh, CA glue with this applicator dot, you know, just kind of around and held it with my hand for about two or three minutes before I even dared let go. And, and it worked out really nicely. I've got no gaps. I've got no light coming out uh, of here. Uh, of, of where these chiller grills are, which is usually where it happens. Uh, and thankfully the glue uh, did not smear through here. It did not melt any of the paint. So these chiller grills are nice and uh, not, they're nice. <laughs> uh, now, uh, let's talk a little bit about these clamps here. I've got them on both the cells. Uh, the reason for that is because these little, these overhang, these, I guess you call it a little pinchers here that go over the Bussard collectors, uh, they're straight. They go kind of straight out and it's not a really tight fit. So there's a, there's a little gap there. So I, that part, I did need to kind of pull it out a little bit and put a little CA glue there in that. And then I'm, I clamped it down. And then right here in this, um, this gap, and you can still see it, uh, but it was a little bit more apparent right here. There was a, a decent little gap there of uh, in between these two pieces right here so you can see that and uh, you can still see the gap now but it was even more pre prevalent before so I, I just I risked it and put a little bit more model glue down in there with the needle here you can see here where that stuff just squeaked out and you can already see it distorts the paint I mean this this uh, model cement it really really eats paint you guys so um, even when I was using it sparingly and trying to get it down in there. But anyway, I got a little bit down in there and I've got the clamp uh, holding this down. Now I did make sure to wait about 10 or 15 minutes to let the glue here set. I didn't want this to push down and pull that part apart, but it should be okay. Now I'm going to leave this be overnight the way it is. And then tomorrow I'm going to come in very lightly with the sanding sticks. And hopefully I've got one here. Yeah, I've got some here. So I'm going to take these little sanding sticks and really lightly, and it might take me quite a while, uh, just 
to go through here and just sand these down and get rid of any lip. Yeah, I can feel it right there. Uh, I want to get that nice and smooth and get this nice and smooth and maybe even do something in here. I'm not sure. Uh, now these, these here where these little lines are, these are always a problem because it's really hard to get this sanded down and these are little ridges, they're texture, there's part of the models here, but they don't line up exactly right and there's always a little gap. So anything you sand down, you're risking um, doing it. But I'm going to go ahead and just sand it away until the gap goes down and then we'll use a little bit of the, of the spot glaze putty, which is right here. Just very little bit there just to get rid of any light leaks. It's a, it's a darker putty. And then we'll uh, decant some of the light gray spray paint and just touch it up right there in the middle. I really want these seam lines to go away. Unlike the runabout uh, where we were talking about before where I was okay letting it go. Uh, this is the Enterprise D. This is a big important ship for me. And I want this one to be just perfect. So I'm really going to work hard to get rid of that seam line. And uh, I could use some good wishes with that. <laughs> so, um, all right. Now, all these are going to be put to the side for now, temporarily. And let's go to the next part that we're going to work on, which is the main drive section. So give me one second. I will be right back. Okay, so here's the main drive section. And what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, dremel out the tunnels for the wires that are going to come off the nacelles down here and uh, through this little area and then up here to connect to the power supplies. So we're going to use the Dremel here and I've got this little this little bit right there that should be good to bore it out. And um, oh, before I go on, I, I want to point this out. See this white there? That's, that's some putty. I was going to try to put some red and green lights here on the top and bottom. Uh, in, in the show, there's a, you know, the port and starboard green lights on the top and bottom. And I, what I did was I tried to drill a hole through there with the, with the pin vise. And I more or less got it right, but they were kind of coming out here. And I could have made it work like with some fiber optics and just maybe made one light, one green, one red back here. I, I just decided not to because I kind of mangled the plastic here and it just, it would have been really difficult. So I, I don't think my skills are quite that good yet to get a top and bottom light or even a backlight here on such thin plastic. I mean, this stuff's like an eighth of an inch. And um, I just, I, I tried and then I just said, nah, we're going to cover it up. And uh, maybe, maybe next time, maybe by then I will learn some skills. But that's what this is all about. So we're going to paint over that and pretend that didn't happen. So, um Anyway, uh, yeah, so I've got two concessions here on the model so far. One is the red and green lights that I tried to do, and the other one is the uh, the bottom uh, strobe light on the back of the warp nacelle uh, for each nacelle. I just didn't I didn't want to mess with getting yet another wire, another resistor in there. Um, I wanted the nacelle itself to look really nice. So anyway, that's just uh, the two two little choices I've made. Other than that, I'm really trying to go. Uh, go perfect here so all right well so uh what are we going to do we're going to dremel out the uh tunnel here for the wire and we're going to use this tool here i've got a bunch of them uh let's see where is it uh, oh there there i've got i've got a selection of these things so i just chose this one it's kind of like a cone tip and uh i've got my safety goggles on so here they are and I've also got a mask here that I'm going to put on. And uh, that's important because this Dremel does kick up a lot of dust. And I've uh, noticed, and you could probably hear, hear this thing on me, uh, when I haven't worn a mask, the next day I get, I cough up a little bit of dust. It's a little dark, you know, I get some things coming out of uh, my face uh, that are you know, plastic. So uh, be very careful, you guys. If you're going to do this stuff, uh, wear a mask because this stuff is going to kick up a lot of dust in the air and you don't want to breathe this stuff in. You've got primer and you paint and styrene and all these chemicals and stuff. It's not good for you. So 
All right, let's go. We're going to crank this up to about half speed, and then I will bore out one of these uh, tunnels just so you can see kind of how it ends up and what it's like. I think I'll start with a speed six. Probably good, but I might have to go up to eight. Okay, well, to get this mask off, it's uh, it's not quite down deep enough. I'm going to probably have to change my tool, but uh, that's pretty much uh, the idea there. We're going right down the middle of this thing and up here, and when I, um, when I did the hole for the nacelle, like where they were going to come out, I measured right to the middle of this, this guy coming like right there, so I already knew where to go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep boring this out, and then I'll, what I'll do is I'll sand this down, and then we've got the uh, uh, photo etch stuff that's gonna go right over here and cover all this stuff up. So that's the uh, the really nice solution that we found. Uh, the other solution would have, would have been to run the wire like back here and kind of secure them to the back of this nacelle and, and, and hide it with some putty and stuff, which. Uh, I did see there was a YouTuber. I'll try to link the uh, the YouTuber in the, in the description uh, where he does show it. I mean, he actually did the work and showed the uh, the results of it. And you can kind of see the wire going back. He did a really good job of covering it up, uh, and and I thought that was fine. If you like, if you don't have the photo etch, you don't have the um, the option of that. Uh, running the wire behind here on the back is probably your best option, and then going up through the 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 stern of the ship uh, would be the best way to kind of hide it and be able to light the nacelle. So, but if you do have uh, an extra $25, $30 laying around, uh, you can order that nice photo etch set and it's got the uh, pieces for here and some phaser uh, uh, photo etch and some other things. Uh, and, and notably the back of the saucer section for the little blue lights in the back. Uh, I thought those were really nice too. So, we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and incorporate those, uh, and I think this is probably the best solution if if you've got a little extra uh, cash in your budget. So, all right. Well, I'm going to continue to do this uh, off camera, but you can kind of see what's going on here. I have to find a different a different uh, boring bit here and and exp explore that. And uh, don't know what we're going to come back with. Probably this back area is assembled and everything, but uh, we'll we'll uh, see you soon, everyone.